so full. I need an extra arm or some hands or fingers or something. Hey, well, I didn't think I'd ever get a seat. Is anybody sitting here? Do you care if I sit here? Oh, I grabbed this off the table, honey. I'll tell you about that in a minute. Let me find somewhere to... I brought two forks. Well, see, I just fixed my plate. And I... I more land up two forks. Let me, let me, uh... Hold on a second. I just don't have anywhere to put everything. Is that your cup? Do you mind if I slide it over a little bit? I'm going to put my drink up here. I'm afraid someone's going to knock it over if I leave it over here on the floor. Do you care? Okay. Excellent. Thank you. <sighs> no, I didn't just get here. Actually, I've been here. But I got into going all around. I had to go see Aunt Berlin. And then she followed me over to the food. And apparently, the preacher had already said the prayer. And, and they had started. The line had started for the food when we got here. I was running late. I mean, I've been here a while, but I was hoping to get here earlier. We've, we've, it's, it's a mess at home right now. Well, not really at home so much as at the shop. Things at the shop right now are, are a nightmare. Um, what, it was in the paper. Did you read it? You didn't read about that? Oh my God. Um, well, what happened was, uh, Symphony and I, you know, Symphony, she, my, yeah, we were over there one day. We were working on these stiletto nails. Like, cause she does, she does this show. Uh-huh. And she was in this, she was going to do this one thing one night where she had this stiletto nails. Do you know what those are? It's where, um, and you can design them. You can paint them any way you want to. But they're long and pointy and they come down like a stiletto heel. And I have been working on learning how to do that. I haven't had anybody ask for it, but I figure since it's starting to become po uh, popular that people are going to start wanting that. And um, so Symphony said, well, honey, work on me because I want some for my show. So we were in there working on that. And we got to laughing and cutting up in there and accidentally knocked over the wa the hot wax, the, the wax heater, like for doing wax hair removal. Knocked it over and the wax heater hit the serenity candle that we had down on this little uh, stool the serenity candle caught the drapes on fire burned up my dream catcher i mean the irony is just ridiculous <laughs> the serenity candle and my dream catcher and we we kind of burnt the salon down trish is real mad at me right now she wouldn't speak to me for two days and I, I apologized. I tried calling her. I went to her house. She would not hear it. She didn't want to talk to me. Well, you know, I told her. I said, it's all my fault. Me and Symphony are going to make it okay. We're going to fix this. And uh, when she finally got to her, she talked to me a little bit. And um, so we got, we had to temporarily work out of this other office uh, site right there at the shopping center for a while. But they've, they've about finished up most of the renovations from the fire damage. So, I mean, that's good. But, yeah, Trisha was real, real mad at me. And she would not talk to me. But I've been dealing with that. And I'm just, I'm frazzled. It's like I've spent a lot of nights at the, at the beauty salon trying to help with the renovation and getting everything fixed. So, I'm not at home a lot at night. And I've not been cooking. And Mama's mad at me right now. Look at her. She won't even look at me. She said she's ashamed. She said she is so ashamed of me right now. Mama, come here. Come over here. Look, look at her. She won't even, she won't even look at me. Mama, will you come here, please? It's like everywhere I go it makes somebody mad. <laughs> she, why is she embarrassed? I, Ask her, she'll give you earful. Mama, yes, come here. Well, here she comes, she'll tell you. I just wanted to apologize for embarrassing you, although I will tell you now, nobody here is paying any attention to it. Nobody even knows who brought those chicken nuggets. So I don't know, I don't even know what you're embarrassed about. Well, no, see, yeah, tell her. 
She's embarrassed because I didn't cook anything for the reunion. I, yes, I know I didn't, I know I didn't cook anything, Mama. I didn't have time. I was at the shop last night till about three o'clock in the morning. I've been redoing the wallpaper and stuff in there. So I did not have time to go home and cook something. I'm sorry, you know, but look, nobody here cares. Do you care? I mean, does it bother you that I didn't cook something that what I brought was not homemade? Does it matter to you? I sure don't care. Half the stuff here is stuff that people brought from Bojangles or the deli at the store. I mean, nobody cares. Harris Teeter Deli, you know what they do? Mama, do you know what they do? They go to the deli and they get them some chicken salad or whatever. And then they, they dump it out of the container that they get at the store. And then they put it into something that looks like they made it. I guarantee you that's what at least half the stuff up there is. By the way, don't nobody care? Uh, well, I just want to say I'm sorry, and I am sorry. Do you forgive me? Look, Mama, I'm trying to save my job, okay? I mean, you understand, don't you? Trish is my boss. I mean, if it, if it weren't for her, I would not have anywhere to, to ply my trade. I'd have to go to Nathanville, and I do not feel like driving all the way to Nathanville to go work every day. It's too far. I'm going to eat. I'm going to eat. I know. I know. Okay. Well, you go get you something to drink. Okay. She's old school. I mean, you know, you, I mean, I understand. I get it. You know, she grew up in a time where you, you may, you bring something homemade to the reunion, but you know what? Most people don't. It's like I was just saying, most people don't do that. We, I saw Aunt Berlin over there, and she, she grabbed me, and she dumped some of her, her pickles on my plate. She said my plate didn't have enough color, said it was too beige or something. Well, look at my plate. I think this is a perfectly acceptable plate with my two forks. My perfectly acceptable plate of reunion food. I got my, got my cheese doodles. I got a turkey sandwich, green beans. My mama's green beans are real good. Some ham and some, looks like hamburger helper. And her, her nasty pickles. Well, like that episode of Andy Griffith, you know, where Aunt B made those horrible pickles. What, Mama? We have plenty of ice. I know, I checked. I just checked right before I finally got over here to sit down. Do you know how long it took me to get to, get to where I could come sit? It took me about 45 minutes to get over here so I could sit down and eat. The, I, I, look, we got three coolers full of ice over there, Mama. We're fine. I don't think anybody's going to put two and two together, Mama. Yes, it's a McDonald's cup. Yes, those are chicken McNuggets over there. Mama, nobody cares. Does it really bother you that much? That Look, I'm recycling, okay? I had this cup when I got here, and then I just, you know, took it, put a little more ice in it, put a drink, put some more drink in it. That way I don't use one of the cups over there on the table. You worry way too much about what other people think. Well, you can go check the ice, but I promise you right now there's plenty. But go ahead. God knows, my mom. Is your mama here? I don't see her. She outside. Man, it's too hot to be out there. It's like 100 degrees out there. Mm. Normally I go out there, but it's been, God, it's been so hot this summer. I can't do it. I mean, you know, I used to usually, usually I'll sit out there in that tree, I, I, in that swing under the big oak tree. I'll sit out there. There's no breeze, there's no nothing. It's so humid out there. And the air is so still. I can't do it. It's just too hot. Oh, let me show you. I grabbed this off the table. Have you heard of this? They were talking about it on the news the other day, and, um, and I hadn't had a chance to try. And I saw this over there on the drink table, and it was only one, and you can see it's almost empty. So I thought I'd grab it. It's a Cheerwine Cream. Two Southern Classics in one. It is Cheerwine with a, uh, a 
taste of uh, crispy crispy cream donuts to it. Isn't it crazy? It's Cheerwine Cream. And I don't know if this is something they're going to make forever or not, but I had to try it. But I had already filled up my cup with something else when I saw this. So when nobody was looking, I just grabbed it and ran over here with it. And I've got it up under my seat now so nobody will see it. I have to drink this up before I can try that. I know I don't understand how. How do you get your wine and Krispy Kreme together in a drink? I don't know, but I'm curious to try that. And I got what is it? I don't know who made this hamburger helper stuff. There's nothing special about it. But I mean, you know, it's, it's hamburger helper. There's really only so much you can do with it. So how's your summer going? That sounds great. Did y'all have a good time? I've been meaning to go there. I've been there, but not in a long time. They have a lot of good restaurants down there, don't they? They do. I, it's expensive, but I mean, you know, if you're on vacation, you know, gotta live a little. These are my mama's green beans. These are great. She meddles in my business all day, but she makes some good green beans. You know what she does? When she grows these herself, they're just green beans. She grows them herself. And I think these are actually some she grew last year because she canned a whole bunch of them. But, um, she grows them and then strings them and snaps them. And then she puts them on a low bowl in a big old pot with uh, beef bouillon cubes and nothing else. That's it. I mean, a lot of people use uh, like fat back or bacon or something like that. She just throws a couple of beef bouillon cubes in there and lets it just, just go on a low bowl for like an hour and she'll keep adding, she'll keep adding water to it. And sometimes what she'll do, and, and I like them that way, but another way that she does it, sometimes um, she will put the beans in a pot with not a whole lot of water and then she will add to it some kind of oil and it doesn't even matter. You can use just regular old vegetable oil. Uh, canola oil, olive oil, it doesn't really matter. But you let it boil on low, not a hard boil, just like a slow rolling boil until most of the water evaporates. You leave a lid off, don't put a lid on it. And keep the keep the heat low, but just enough to keep a rolling boil going until most of the water evaporates. And it's like those beans just absorb that oil in there. And they it, it, it almost makes brings out this sweet taste to the beans and they are so delicious and they kind of shrivel just a little bit they shrivel up a little bit they're not as plump and sort of fat looking as normal oh my god they're so good they are so good i mean it takes a while to cook them like that but it is worth it it is so worth it uh, she didn't make it these are some i can tell by looking at them and just by the way they I can kind of smell that beef bouillon cube and the way they look because they're not shriveled at all and they're not greasy at all that she did these with just some bouillon cubes and you don't really taste the beef bouillon cube but it brings out some kind of flavor in the bean and it's just really yummy so she made that and I'm sure there's some macaroni and cheese up there she always brings green beans and macaroni and cheese and her uh, candy sweet potatoes and I did not get any sweet potatoes and I'll have to go back for that Yeah, I don't. I don't like to get them right when I have all this other stuff on my plate because then it it makes a mess. But um, oh god, I think Berlin's pickles are the best too. I feed them to the dog. The dog won't even eat them. Mm. I get that taste out of my mouth. I know. I don't know who decided that either. I mean, I was kind of hoping that this year we'd have it somewhere else. Aunt Helen's would be good. Mm-hmm. But no, I don't have it here. <laughs> That's what we call her growing up, too. <laughs> Did you spend a lot of time over here as a kid? 
Yeah, me too, man. Oh my God. That's exactly what we called her. I don't want to say it out loud. <laughs> I feel bad because we're right here in her house. You know, it's so disrespectful. But that's what we called her too. <laughs> Granny, don't touch it. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, it's true. That's how she was. She was Granny, don't touch it. <laughs> Everything in this house has a place, and she has lots of breakable stuff, and it's all down low. This is not a child, child-proof house. It never has been. She did not believe in that. No, her thing was, you keep your kids away from my stuff. I'm not moving my stuff. You need to move your kid. So Granny Don't Touch It volunteers to have the family reunion and have all these little kids come to her house. Well, see, I thought we were done for last year. You remember that? I know. Uh-huh. Tommy's little boy exactly went in there and got in that room that had all that depression glass in it and broke like five or six plates. Just knocked them off on purpose on the floor and just shattered them and Granny don't touch it had a fit. I thought we were done for then. I thought for sure she, we would never have another reunion here. But she agreed to do it again. I don't know who talked her into it, but I see she hasn't put anything out of out of reach. So it's bound to happen again. Hmm. What, honey? Why are you bringing that over? Don't put that here. Oh, God. Okay, but don't do it again, okay? No more. And you need to come back here and get this later. If you're going, if you're going to get it, you need to drink it. Okay, but don't do, don't, don't do that anymore. That was Brittany. She saw me bring a drink over here, and she just brought one. She saw one over there. She's been wanting to try. And I've looked everywhere. I've been in every grocery store in this town. I went up to Nathanville when we were at Center City two weekends ago I looked for it. They didn't have it. None of the stores there had it. Well, somebody apparently found it because they had it on the drink table up there. I'm not going to let her leave it here. No, I'm going to let her have a cup of it. Now I'm going to make her go put it back. What is it? It's, um, I'll show you. And I may try this myself. This is Canada Dry Blackberry Ginger Ale. It is made of real ginger. It's caffeine free. And it is naturally flavored and has other natural fi uh, flavors. And it's kind of purple, but it's a light. I don't know if you can see it. It's kind of a light purple. And it's a limited time offer. So I guess they're not going to make it all the time. But she had been wanting to try it because she loves she loves blackberry. She loves blackberry juice. And she loves stewed blackberries. And she loves ginger ale. And she wanted to try this blackberry ginger ale. That's the only reason I'll let her stick it over here because, you know, all the all the weird drinks up there on that table get going first. Then all you're left with is all the store brand drinks that nobody wants. And you got... Then you got... She made that face when she saw that I let Amberly in have some Pepsi. I said, Amberly, look, it's once a year, you know. It's not like I let her go around chugging this stuff all the time. I know she's only seven, but good grief. <sighs> I let them have a little sip of soda every now and then. It's no big deal. God, only know, look. Look, she's got Karen trapped over there. <laughs> Mm -mm. I'm not going to save her. Mm -mm. Ain't Marlene's like a land shark, man. She'll trap you. Mm -mm. You can go if you want to. I'm not going over there. God. I don't know. She's coming over here. Hey, Marlene. I'm having a great time. Yes, ma'am. Your pickles are great. Mm -hmm. I already ate one. <laughs> yeah. 
Yes, I know. Yes, ma'am, I know. And I will make sure that her next drink is water or tea. Well, I know it's got caffeine in it. Well, I don't see anything wrong with it. It's just, it's just a fun day. Okay. All right, bye. Who made her king of the world? Why does she do that? Why does she go around doling out advice to people that didn't ask for it? She don't pay my bills. I don't care what she thinks. And I am not eating these nasty pickles. Hmm. No, you're not going to see him here this year, huh? -uh. No, he made it clear he wasn't coming. Well, I saw him at food line last week. He said he ain't coming. He said if Toby's here, he's not coming here. It's pathetic. And it was all, yeah, it was all over that. And they had a good business going too. You know, they really did. And in a town this size, it's hard to get a small business going. A successful business where you're actually going to make money at it. I mean, unless it's a front for drugs, then you might be okay. But this was a legitimate business. Him and Toby had a good thing going. Yep, they had they had contracts with Camden High School, the Booster Club. They were making shirts for a couple of the softball teams around here. You know, they had that screen printing business, and it was going great. And then he started saying that Toby was taking money out of the till and taking money out of the petty cash and not accounting for it. And then he went out and Got that real nice Yeti cooler, and he said, oh, there's proof right there that he's stealing. And it wasn't proof of nothing. I'll tell you who it was. It was that wiry little wet and little meth head girl he hired to work in the shop on the weekends. I promise you, she was the one taking. If anybody was taking money, it was her. She ain't nothing but a little tweaker. I don't know where she came from. That little nasty girl, she was the reason they were running out of money. And one wasn't Toby, but so now... Him and Toby are like a divorced couple. They won't go anywhere. If they know the other one will be there, they won't go. They will not go anywhere where they're going to end up together. It's pathetic. It's so stupid. You know, we talk about, you know, family is everything. And you need to stick with your family and work things out. And this family is so stupid. It has splintered off so many times. You have little sections of the family that just won't have anything to do with each other over some stupid argument or some kind of stupid grudge about something. Life's too short for that. But yeah, he said he's not coming. And Toby said, I don't care. He showed up. And he's not worried about looking at him. Carrying on. No, he just went out the door. I don't think he's seeing anybody. I don't know. He was dating that girl from Walmart. I don't know. She sounded like she's from up north or something. She wasn't from here. Well, you know he moved out of his mom and daddy's house. Finally. <laughs> he is. He's been working. He's working at the uh, the tire. What's the name of that tire place in Nathanville? Yeah. He's working there. I don't know if he's working full time or not. But after the t-shirt the business, after they shut that down, he had to get a job somewhere, so he's working at that tire place. But see, now it's like some of the family is saying, yeah, well, you got to pick. You're either on Toby's side or you're on Gary's side. I don't want to be on anybody's side. You know, I think it's stupid. It was that stupid little meth head that was taking the money, not Toby. But either way, I mean, we're talking about, we're not talking about tens of thousands of dollars here. And it's your family. You know, work it out and move on. But no, no. He said he ain't having it. Oh, my God. Don't look. <clears throat> I said don't look. I just why I love sitting here. With my back to the wall because I can see everybody that comes in. <laughs> okay, 
Okay, you can look now. He's turned. He's, he's not looking this way. Who's that girl? I don't know her. Now, that's just nasty. That's nasty. That's disgusting. She can't be any more than 25. I bet she's not. I bet she's in her early 20s. Ooh, 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 that's nasty. Oh, my God. Don't look. Oh, my God. He just grabbed her butt. Okay, well, that that throws your theory out the window right there. Obviously, they're not just friends. You know, he's been married how many times now? Four. At least four. There was Shonda. <laughs> the two that rhyme, Shonda and Rhonda. And Prissy and Linnell. And that ain't none of them. I can promise you that. I don't know who that is. You know, he's got kids older than that. He's got he's got a daughter older than that. That is disgusting. I'm sorry. Now, see that right there? How old is he? Well, that's what I was thinking. I was thinking he was at least 50. Oh, my God. That is so disgusting. Well, you know why they like him. You know why them young girls like him. Mm-hmm. That disability check. Mm-hmm. She makes more money sitting at home than I do going to work every day. That's all she sees. She looks at him, she sees money. That's it. Because she ain't got nothing else to offer. Mm-hmm. You can't tell him nothing, though. It's just, but you know, A, if the roles were reversed, let's say he was a woman and that was a man, I guarantee you more people would be grossed out by that. You have a 50 year old woman and a 20 year old man. Maybe not grossed out, but they'd see a problem with it. Like it was, I don't know, they were in it for the wrong reasons or something. Hey, when I'm 50, if I could, other than Jimmy, if I was single and 50 years old and I could snag a 20-year-old guy, hey, why not? I mean, Jimmy, are good. I'm joking. He's here, yeah. He's probably outside. Last time I looked, they had that big old dartboard set up out by the, um, the oak tree out there. He's probably out there. Yes, can you please come get this? Here, take your drink. No, I'm not going to let you keep it. You take this, and you get you one cup, and you put it back up there on that table. We'll find you some. We'll find you some, but you can't keep that whole thing. That's not nice. You did not bring that, and you're not going to keep it. Oh, you can have a cup. Go ahead. Don't roll your eyes at me. God, that girl gets more attitude. She's 16, thinks she knows everything. I remember being that age. You remember? Thought we had everything figured out. Shoot, chill. Man, we knew it all, didn't we? Mm-hmm. She'll be in the 11th grade this year. It's unbelievable. drink's getting watery. God, here comes Mama again. Now what have I done? I'm just sitting here trying to eat my food. What, Mama? Okay, well, that's one cooler. I know, Mama. I know. It's one cooler. Did you look in the other two? The lids are closed. I promise you, Mama. Go in there and look. There's plenty of ice. I swear. I am not making this up, and I don't need to get up. I'm not going to get up. And if we are running low on ice, I don't know what you want me to do. I mean, I can send Jimmy to the store, but I don't look. We came in, and we had a hard time getting parked. And if I have to get my car out, I'm going to have to have probably four or five people move their cars just to get out of here because we came down the driveway. And then some people kind of came in behind us, and we're kind of blocked in right now. 
So even if we are running low on ice, I don't know what I would do about it. But you go, no, you don't have to take my word for it. Go look. Okay. Well, about 10 years ago, we had a reunion and it wasn't here. It was, um, I think it was, a, I think it was Uncle Bill's house. <clears throat> And we did. We ran out of ice. Of all things, we did. We ran out of ice. And ever since then, she has been so paranoid that we're going to run out of ice again. And I think other people feel the same way because every year we end up with a ton of ice. I never bring it because I know about five people are going to bring these huge things of ice. Uh-huh. And so she's so paranoid about it. But what happened was, when that did happen 10 years ago, it was back when Grandpa was still alive. Well, you know, he was kind of like the dementia had started to set in, but it's like, it had started to set in, but nobody really wanted to accept it yet. And Mama came up to me and she said, Lynette, we're running out of ice. Can you go with Daddy and get some ice? Go to, go to town, go to the store and get some ice. And I said, Mama, you want me to ride with Grandpa to the, to the store? And she said, yes, go. She was so, she was so frazzled. I don't know, she had some she was helping get everything set up and they were running late and they were trying to get all the food out and open and everything. So she wasn't really thinking about what she said. Well, I knew that Grandpa was having trouble driving. I mean, like, he wouldn't stop at stop signs. He was weaving all over the road. It was like riding with a drunk person, really. I mean, he couldn't help it. It's like he couldn't control what he was doing. It's like he, he couldn't drive. Like he would hit the gas instead of the brake or hit the brake instead of the gas. I mean, it was very scary. He had no business driving. <clears throat> and actually, I want to say it was less than a month after that that they took, they had to take his keys away. And that was really sad. But that day, Mama told me, she said, ride with, ride with Daddy to the store and get some ice. Run up to food line, get some ice. Get, I don't know, four big bags. And I was trying, you know, he was standing right there, so I didn't want to say, Mama, he can't drive. And I couldn't drive at the time. So, you know, I, I said, Mama, I, I don't, mm -mm -mm. And she said, just, just go. I don't have time to deal with this right now. Just go. Well, we had to take his car, and I can't drive his car because it's a funky stick. I, I never could figure out that thing. And uh, so we get in the car, and I walk out there like, oh, my God, we're going to die. We're going to die. And, um, so, all the way from Uncle Bill's to the food line, he didn't stop for a single stop sign. He didn't stop for a single stop light. Fortunately, there was only the one. We, he blew through, like, four stop signs. And if I could have got him to reach, I would have strapped every seatbelt in that car around me. It, talk about a white-knuckle ride. I don't think he slowed down. He didn't touch the brake all the way from Uncle Bill's to food line. I kid you not. And then all the way back, same thing. And I got back, I was just white as a sheet. And I said, Mama, why'd you make me do that? And then I think it, when we got back, it occurred to her what she had sent me to do. And she said, oh my God, I'm so sorry, Lynette. Oh my God. Are you okay? I said, well, yeah, but why did you do that? So she felt real bad. I said, don't worry about it. You know, you got your, you got your pants full right now. And I felt real bad for Mama, though, because she's the one that had to take the keys away from Grandpa. And he cried. It was real sad. And I, I hated that. I just, I can't imagine my child coming to me and saying, Mama, you can't drive anymore because you, you just can't. So I know that had to be really hard. And I hate that she was the one pick that had to do it. But, I mean, let's face it, out of all the brothers and sisters, she's the most responsible. So they nominated her to do it. Well, you need to come by. You need to do that. Oh, we're still in that empty, um, we're in the same shopping center, but we're in one of the empty, in one of the empty shops down at the end. You can see Trisha's put up a sign. She put up a sign over her shop, kind of pointing people down that way. And, um, you need to come down. I could practice on those stiletto nails, and I promise I won't burn anything down this time. <laughs> Trisha's banned all candles from the shop. She said, you can't have any more candles in here. 
I don't know if she thought we were having seances or what. She wasn't fond of it to start with. I can, I can do some stiletto nails for you. Um, I can do some of that crackle finish, you know. I'm going to let my nails go bare for right now. I'm just letting them take a little vacation. I haven't gone this long without nail polish, and I don't know how long. But I have a nail polish on them all the time, and using all that nail polish remover on them was really starting to wear them out a little bit. So, I'm just letting them take a little break. Well, hey, honey. How are you? Gosh, you look wonderful. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Say hi. It's good to see you. Yeah. Oh, you're so sweet. Mm hmm. Will you take care? Get you something to eat. Mm hmm. And the drinks are right over there. Who was that? I swear every year I come here and more and more people I don't know. I have no clue who that was. Do you know who that was? I've never seen that woman in my life. Sometimes I think people just see the sign up on the road up there and it says family reunion and they just stop and come in and get something to eat. I mean, think about it. You could do it. I need to put that on my bucket list, you know. I, you girl, you know I do it. Look driving by and you see a sign, family reunion. It's like I could pull this off. Drive down in there. Act like you belong. See, that's the trick. Act like you belong. Do like that woman. Now that woman may legitimately belong here, but did you notice she didn't call me by name? Or you neither. Well, of course I didn't call her by name. I don't even know who she is. But look, she's piling up her plate. Look at her. Oh, my God. That plate's going to buckle. She needs one of these extra strong, strong plates like mine. Sure, I got like three pounds of chicken legs on her plate. Now, tell me she didn't do it. Tell, who eats like that in a reunion? Nobody. I'm going to put that on my bucket list. I'm dead serious. One of these days, I'm going to be driving along, and I'm going to see a sign for a family union. And I'm going to stop, act like I belong, walk down in there, <laughs> say hey, hug some people, talk to some people, get me a big old plate of food, eat it, and go on my way. <laughs> I'm going to do that. Mark my words, honey. I'll, take a, I'll post a selfie on Facebook when I do it. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I'll do it. She ain't from here. Mm -mm. Hey, I dare you go over there and ask her who, who her mom and daddy are. Hey, if she's part of the family, she won't have a problem answering that. And she starts stumbling and stammering around, you know, she, she just stopped in for some food. <laughs> Which I don't care. I mean, hey. There's enough food up there to feed an army. One thing I'll say about our family, man, we know how to feed people. We bring good food, even though not all of it's homemade. Now, Mama will sulk about that for the next two weeks. I guarantee you, when I see her in church tomorrow, she'll be sulking about it. She'll pout. Even though I think I had a perfectly good excuse, don't you? I mean, I burned the shop down. My life, my life is a mess right now. Well, Jimmy's been a good help. You know, he does drywall and stuff, so he actually helped out with that. They worked out with the insurance people. So he's been a good help. Saved some money, too. So, um, I mean, we're getting there. It's looking good, but it's not. We're not quite done yet. So in the meantime, Trish has to just work in this makeshift empty office building. She's ill at me. Everywhere I go, I got people mad at me. But on the bright side, we got Symphony's uh, stiletto nails done, and she was a big hit that night. Everybody loved it. She wants me to do it again. I said, girl, I just got bad mojo on it. I don't want to do that again. Just tell me, get over it. 
Honey, get over it. You got to recover and move on. I said, I guess you're right. So, I don't know. I may do them again, but I haven't. I haven't done stiletto nails on anybody else since then. Of course, that was just a few weeks ago. <clears throat> well, I really guess I ought to get up. I need to go see where Amberlynn went. Let's see where Jimmy went, too. Well, Amberlynn said she had some cantaloupes she wanted to get to me, and I need to go get up with her before she leaves. I don't know how long she's going to be here. I mean, it, you know, I, I know it takes her a while to go around and judge everybody, but usually, usually she's not here the whole time, so I need to go find her before she finishes her judgy Nick Judgerson round and leaves. Get that cantaloupe from her. You want me to take your plate? Here, give me, give me. Give me a napkin. Give me that. I'll take it with mine. It was good to see you. You really need to come by. Seriously, or give me a call or something. Just let me know. Uh, it's, uh, Wednesday's a good day. If you want to come in on Wednesday, come on in, we'll chat. Get your nails done, catch up on the gossip. Just give me a call, okay? Well, it's good to see you. And, uh, where did you park? Up on the road, you're smart. You're smart. See, Jimmy pulled on down in the driveway and we were stuck, but you be careful getting out of here, okay? 